Hey everybody, it's Chris Petrie. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. We're going to do a beautiful watercolor painting. We're doing flowers. We're going to do a bouquet of white roses. We're going to do it in backlighting, which we're going to have a window set up here in our painting. We're going to have backlighting coming through this window. So we're going to paint some grass and things outside this window. So we're going to pretend that we're uh, in a scene where we're looking out our window. We're having our vase of flowers right here on our countertop. We have light coming through the window. We have various subject matter in our painting, a coffee mug, a green apple, a lemon. We have a beautiful olive oil uh, bottle. We have uh, an old McCormick uh, tin with spices and things in it. And we have our, again, our beautiful bouquet of flowers and, fl and our vase. You're gonna have so much fun painting this. We're gonna cover every detail of this painting. So join along with us. We'll be, you know, right back to start and, um, you're going to see how much fun it is, and we're going to actually do a lot of creative uh, work here. You're going to learn how to kind of put different things together in your painting uh, from different sources so that you don't always have to worry about having the perfect picture or the perfect uh, photograph or being out, you know, in uh, still life or outdoors doing plein air painting. You don't have to worry about all that. You can take creative ideas and bring them all into a painting from just some simple things with a cell phone and uh, maybe an idea or two that you might have and a few things that you have around the house. Okay, so let's get started in just a second. Again, thanks for coming by and let's get started. Okay, welcome everyone and uh, thanks for coming by. This is Chris Petrie and uh, we're going to do a beautiful flower painting here and I just want to uh, say thank you uh, for, for coming by, for um, <clears throat> being here, painting along with me, and painting along with all of us. We're um, quite a large um, group of watercolor artists on my channel. Uh, so um, uh, if you're just new here and this is your first time joining along, I welcome you. I say, you know, thank you for coming by. You're in good hands here. We have a lot of great artists that uh, paint along with us here on YouTube. You'll see a lot of the great comments in the comments section. So take advantage of that. But uh, let's get right into the video here. So you saw the finished painting, of course, on the first uh, few seconds of the video. Now we'll get into the, like how we're doing everything, how we're going to get started, how we're thinking through the processes and the methods here. So first thing off is let's get our paper all set up and our paints. And we're going to use a uh, mobile phone for our uh, subject matter. So I just looked up some roses online, some white roses. We're going to use that we're going to improv this uh, painting. So basically we're going to be creative. And as, as an artist, you have to be, uh, be creative. You know, you have to sometimes, sometimes you'll be just stale and you don't know what to do and you're running out of ideas. That's when you get creative and you just say, I'm going to take maybe just a few different things, some subject matter from different air, you know, from different uh, places maybe. So here I might take some roses from this painting. Uh, I mean, this, uh, uh, rose uh, vase and flowers here, this uh, bouquet, small bouquet. I'll take this from uh, maybe a picture on the internet. Then I'll draw from my experiences of painting many paintings of flowers and say, well, maybe I'm going to make an interesting backdrop here. Maybe I'll have a window in the background shining some light in through the painting. So we'll be kind of painting this uh, scene or this um, composition uh, looking into the light. The light's coming from the the window so we have a backlit scene here with some uh we're painting into the light and there'll be some lighting from the front too as well but most of the light's going to come from the back round which would be the light of the window so we'll kind of create something like that you know a background lighting coming through the window we'll have some roses in a vase and maybe we'll have a little table maybe or a windowsill we'll, we'll come up with some creative ideas so that's the thing get you get your creative um juices flowing have a great time of this. Come up with your own ideas. Take, I really do this a lot. I take different subject matter from different areas. I might take an idea from a watercolor art book. I might take some ideas from uh, my uh, mobile phone here when I go on an internet search. Uh, I also might take some ideas from something I saw on TV. I might take some other ideas from something I saw in a magazine. So you have to just Sometimes if you're if you're getting bored or stale and you don't know what to do, just grab some different ideas, kind of like a, a collage. Grab a collage of ideas and bring it into your artwork and just have a fun time of it. Because, you know, sometimes just looking at a photograph and painting that can get boring or um, 
always, uh, you know, another thing too is setting up still life. I don't do that a lot here because it doesn't work great on camera for YouTube. But another great way to paint, which is really fantastic, is you just grab some things, put it on a table with a white tablecloth, and draw and paint that. And you'll be amazed at how fun that is. And it's just really never ending subject matter. You can just take anything your heart desires. You put it on a table with a white tablecloth and you're all set. You're ready to go. So that's what the many great artists all through time have done. Many great art schools um, do that. They set up still life constantly on a table with some white tablecloth and artists sit around the table and they paint from that. So, you know, these are all the great things you can do as an artist, a watercolor artist. So have a fun, fun. We're going to just create some ideas ourselves here too. Kind of doing the same idea of making, you know, bringing some different ideas all into one composition. And then we'll, we'll, we'll create that. So the first thing I have is my phone here. I have, I'll put this out of the screen just for a second. This is our, uh, our, our watercolor mat. We're going to just draw a very, very super light. Actually, I'm going to use a thinner pencil line. Just a super light pencil sketch you can barely see, just so you get the idea of where this mat is going to sit. When, you, when you're done painting, you're going to want to put this mat over the top of it, so you'll have a, a finished painting with a perfect mat. Your painting will be just right for the mat, and then you just, you just have to purchase a frame, and you'll have a frame painting, a beautiful frame painting. So that's all you have to do. So now what I do is I, I get the dimensions of the mat window here, then I lift up my, my paper, and then I just go another inch beyond. So I just take that measurement and go an inch beyond, like that, on all sides, approximately an inch. And then I simply take a ruler, and I just take the ruler and I... Maybe I can even use a mini ruler. I have lots of small rulers. I just break them in half. I, tr I just score them with a little bit of a razor knife with gloves on, so I always wear gloves when I'm using my razor knife. Thick, heavy um, leather gloves. And then I make a, a mark on my ruler with a, a pen or a, a marker. And then I score it with a razor knife wearing some leather gloves. You should always work safe like that when you're, when you're doing your um, arts and crafts and hobby stuff. And then I break the ruler in half, and then I have a small miniature half ruler. And you can buy these in the half size, too. You can buy half, half size rulers, like six inches. So that's easier to do that than, than trying to do, you know, arts and crafts and trying to do all kinds of things with... When you can just purchase one online, maybe on Amazon they have them, probably for like a dollar. So I'm just making my um, painting an inch larger all the way around. So this way I have room to take that mat and move it around a little bit in case I want to adjust the painting a little bit. What we don't want to do, you definitely don't want to paint your painting the exact size of the mat opening or the mat window because then you don't have any room to play with. You always want to have a little bit of extra room. So you make your painting about an inch larger all the way around than your mat window or mat opening size like that. So we have that. We're all set with our mat. Now what we do is we grab some tape. So I'm going to take some artist tape and just go right around the outside edge of that, which is the larger pencil line where we made that larger opening. And I'll just do some tape on there. And that's always good to put tape around your compositions. This way when you're done painting, you peel up the tape and it just looks beautiful. You have a almost like a finished mat around your painting without doing much work at all. And it's not too expensive just to put some tape on it, right? So it makes sense to do that. Okay, and then I'll also make sure I tape my paper down to my table here so that my I don't want my paper moving at all when I'm painting and drawing. So that's why I always, you know, kind of harp on that and say, please tape down your paper no matter what you're doing, whatever kind of paper, or if you're using sketchbooks, whatever it is, always tape your paper so that it doesn't move around. You don't want your pencil sketching and pencil drawing and contour drawing to go awry if you have your paper sliding around and moving around on you. Okay, so we're pretty much set on getting our paper all set up with our tape around the edges. I took a little bit of kneaded eraser and just lifted up that pencil line, that original pencil line of the 
the matte opening, the matte window like this. So I just erased that line and now my new line is actually the tape all the way around. So there we have a good amount of things all set up. The next thing I like to do is I always take my palette and tape my palette down to my table for videos. So if you're eventually going to make videos on YouTube or maybe you're already making videos on YouTube and creating your own content and creating your own um, YouTube videos or other videos, maybe other sites, they have lots of uh, internet sites that you can put your work on. I know there's Rumble and there's um, Patreon. There's all kinds of sites you can set up your artwork and put your artwork on or even art, art videos. So I'm just saying that when I'm doing videos here like this, I always make sure everything is is like really taped down so it doesn't move around because that's very annoying for people that are watching. If you're doing things and things are sliding around and moving, it's very distracting. So that's one of the things I learned when I first started doing paintings on YouTube was I needed to always have all my gear, my palette, my paper all uh, set down very securely with tape so nothing moves around and this way your viewers aren't going to be distracted by that kind of a thing. So now I'll put down a little bit of um, this is I guess um, I guess it's carpet carpet uh, non-slip carpet uh, roll. I put that down there so I'll have my phone on that so it doesn't move around too or slide around. I'll even bring this in a little bit to the picture there. All right, so that's perfect right there. Okay, so now you can see on, on cam that we have our roses and our bouquet here, and that's what we're going to kind of use for our bouquet in the center of this painting, and then we'll work on the background later. So let's start out with the bouquet first, and let's just kind of think of it as, let's say, let's start Let's start our vase about here. I'm just going to make a vase like so. Like that. And I'm just going to start making these leaf forms. And I'm going to do uh, a light preliminary sketch first. So I'm not, this is not my finished sketch, this is just a preliminary sketch. I'm going to make some indications of some fine stems and things around the outside as I go. And these are the other leaf forms here. And it doesn't have to be exact with your picture, you could do it a little different. And then here there's some baby breath, so I'll just do a couple kind of dots like this, just like that, to denote that that's our baby breath right here in the front of the first portion right above the top of the vase. Then as I go up, I start to see my first rows, so I'm going to do my first rows like this. Like that. That's the first rows here. Then we're going to move along here. And there's another rose here. Okay, that's our second rows here, and then we're going to have some more leaf forms here, stems. Okay, and then there's some more leaves here. Then we're going to go up here above this one, so this is the first rows on the left here. Then we notice the next rows is qu quite a, not too far up, maybe just a little bit. And then we have our next.
like that. We have our second rows, or third actually. So we have one here, one to the right, one up here. Then we have another one over here. So we have another couple of leaf forms there. And this one's a little lower. Sometimes if you're doing a light sketch like this, you might find that that's all you need to do and then you're, you're actually, you don't need to do a final contour drawing. Sometimes you can do your preliminary sketch and that's fine. So I might do that here because this is looking pretty good so far. I may not need to do a, a darker line over this. I might be able to leave it just like it is. I think I might do that actually. It's coming along really good. Okay, and then we have our third rows up here. So we're going to do this one over here. Paint, we'll draw this one over here. And there's a leaf form there. Like that. Like that. And I think that's good. So now I'll just do a couple leaf and stems. that. And I think that looks good. All right, so now we have the start of our um, composition, our, our vase of roses. We're going to do some background light from a window behind this scene. And um, I think We'll draw a line back here. This, this will be the uh, countertop. So we're going to draw like a, a kitchen scene with a countertop. So this is our countertop where it meets the, the wall where the window is. And then we're going to have a, a window behind us here. So let's do that. Let's do our window. We'll start our window over here like this. And let's draw our window across here like so. And then we'll just lift this up a second and we'll go through here with the window. And then we'll kind of find out where's the golden mean here. Well, we can take our golden mean ratio caliper and just say maybe there is good. And then it just gives it a little more of a um, professional and polished look if you can use the golden mean to your advantage. So I'll use this here for the um, window frame, like that. So that's the window frame behind here. And then we'll do one more using our calipers. So maybe we'll do one more here, like that. And I'll just make a little mark so I know where I can put the other window frame here. Then I can come over here, make sure that my thickness of my window pane is the same as this. Like that. So I have uh, maybe a triple. And then maybe I'll do the same thing too. I'll take my calipers and I'll look and say, where is this going to look best? Probably this way. Like that. To go across here with some more window panes. Because if we go the other way, it's not going to look good in essence because the window frame is needs to be kind of... That looks good. So I think everything is flowing together nicely. We have a window here, our sash of our window here. We can actually um, do our window sash here like that. And then we can have our window sill here. 
that's kind of maybe a little thicker, like so. Like that. Okay. All right. So we have accomplished a lot right here. We've got our flowers in, our vase, our white roses, our beautiful leaf forms, some baby breath, some other small stems and leaf forms throughout. And that looks wonderful. So we have basically our vase done, our flowers, our background window, which we said we were going to paint backlighting with the light coming through the window, making a nice effect of, you know, that backlighting. And then, you know, you could also, if you see something, you, you might say, oh, I need to make my vase a little larger. You know, you can, you can do that too. You can make your vase a little larger here. I think it needs, maybe looks a little better that the vase is a little larger like that. And I think that's fine. So we'll come back. We're going to, paints are all set, ready to go. When we come back, we'll start painting. I'm glad you could watch this and see how we get everything all set up doing our pencil drawing. And again, if you can go in and do your pencil drawing um, on the first try and you don't really need to do your uh, preliminary sketch, that's fine. You always hear me talk about a preliminary sketch. Please do that if you kind of need to work out your composition first. But if you've been painting a while and you're more of an advanced uh, painter in watercolor, you might not have to do that. So you might all you might have to do is just look at your vase, your flowers, your scene and say, yeah, I kind of know I got to fill up the scene with the flowers, right? We don't want to make small little flowers like this, like a little vase of flowers, just a tiny little bit of that, and then have all this large windows and walls and all kinds of things like that. Let's fill up our scene with the exciting subject matter of the f roses and the, f and the flower bouquet with the baby breath and all the stems and leaf forms. Let's get that really filling up our rectangle here, our picture frame. So we've accomplished that. And then uh, once, you know, and you can go in and do that in one try. You don't really need to do a preliminary sketch if you, if you know, if you feel like you can just go in and kind of get that in pretty quickly and efficiently without the extra time. But if you need that extra time, please do it. If not, just go in, do your drawing, and you're all set. And then you just have to work out a little bit like you, you could pick up these calipers, really simple golden mean calipers, golden ratio calipers, and you can just... Usually you can use them to kind of just space things in your paintings um, so that it looks more pleasant and pleasing. Uh, if you're using something that's giving you an, a basic automatic uh, scale and uh, measure unit of measure set up already for you. So you don't have to kind of work that out and start thinking, well, where do I put my window frames? Where do I put my window? Where do I put my flowers? You can kind of use everything with your golden mean calipers and kind of get some some ideas. This is not quite center. So I put my flowers a little bit to the left of center. Let's see if I'm correct on that. Okay, this is 15 centimeters. 7.5 is here. So this is a little bit to the left. Not a lot, but it is off center. It's not exactly center of the picture, which is kind of good. If you keep things a little bit off center, you're kind of better off. Just a, a little, sneak it over just a little bit instead of being exactly center with your vase, and you're going to have a little more interesting of a look. Okay, all right, so let's uh, get started with our painting in just a second. I went over a lot of, you know, detailed information here, but you want the details, you know, for, for watercolor artists, you're all about the details, getting into these things, figuring out all the different um, methods and techniques you need in watercolor to kind of make your paintings look really good. Um, and uh, so this is a great way to do it, and this is, again, a smaller composition, so this is really doable for anybody out there. If you like flowers, this is the painting for you, and you're going to see how fun it is to actually create this. We're going to show you how to paint around these white roses with the greens in, these, in this photograph. So we're going to paint all the green darks first, and then we'll touch up and do a little bit of shading in our roses. But you'll see how fun that is, and it really does work great when you paint around an object and it then appears and that's called negative shape painting which basically means you're painting around an object and then an object appears so we're going to try that out too that's another great technique all watercolor artists do use so uh, okay let will be right back
Okay, so we're just going to get right into it here with our painting. We're going to get uh, everything started here. So again, we're, we're kind of focusing uh, on the idea that we're going to paint around these white roses with a lot of these greens that we've seen here. You can kind of see these dark greens that are throughout this bouquet. And there's also some uh, baby's breath here. And again, dark uh, green leaf forms and things. So let's do it. But we can also uh, do things a little differently. Don't always feel like you're locked into one thing when you're going in and doing pa and a painting. If you're kind of like always have the mindset of you have to you have to paint it exactly the way you see it, that can be very limiting. So what we're going to do here is let's not get locked into that idea of, oh, we got to paint it just like we're looking at it here on this photograph. Let's not do that. You'll see that I'm going to actually, what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to explain it. I'm going to try to get a lot of darks in here, but not as many as you see here in this picture, this photograph. So I'll take my uh, number four Da Vinci Maestro travel brush. It's a really nice travel brush. I use this a lot. I also use the Charles Reed uh, travel brushes, which are fantastic. Uh, I'm going to see here. I think I'm going to use that maybe because these have some really nice points on them. I just bought a new uh, three pack so you, you can get a Charles Reed uh three brushes in one pack for like, you know, not not too expensive. They're great watercolor brush, brushes. So I just bought one about maybe six months ago and they're still got great sharp points on it. So I'll maybe use that here instead of the other one because this has a better point. So these are really beautiful brushes. So let me, I wet the brush. Then what I do is I have a paper towel or a tissue. So I have a paper towel or a tissue. I wet the brush in my water pail to the right over here. I tap off a little bit of water because I don't want tons of water flooding on this brush and then go in here and start making floods of water in my palette. So I always check off a little bit of water first thing. I rinse the brush, check a little bit of water off it, then I go in and grab some paints. And like we said here, we're going to do some greens in the background and paint around. We'll do negative shape painting, which basically means we're going to paint around the subject and then we'll make it appear. So I'm going to use sap green, uh, olive green up here, maybe some burnt sienna over here just to get like a little darker green with some olive green, maybe some raw umber too over here. So I'm going to have a mixture of different greens and I'll also make a little bit of a darker green down here too. So we want to have a kind of a, with some French ultramarine blue because there are some really dark greens here. So let's start off, and I'm just going to start to do some green leaf forms. And I use the brush shape, which has got that point to it. And then you can just place the point of the brush down, press, and there you have a leaf form, because it's actually the same shape of the brush, if you can see that, right? That's kind of like... It's basically shaped like a leaf, the point of the brush. So if you just tap your brush down on the paper and then lift up, you have your leaf form right there with the point, and then you can finish up that leaf form like so. And then again, rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water. Then I'll go in and get a lighter green. Maybe I'll come over here and do a lighter green over here, like so, and then I'll make sure I keep this going. Like that. So I just kind of want to mix up my... my greens. I don't want to make just one color green. So you're always at an advantage if you can go in and mix different colors. Like if you're going to make greens here like I'm doing for my um, leaf forms and stems and things like this in my flower painting. So we're working on this together. It's to your advantage to use as many greens as you can. So take as many greens as you can on your palette and put them into that painting because you're just going to have a, like a, just a, a, like a real, I don't know, like a smorgasbord of, um, colors that people, when they look at your painting, they're going to go, wow, look at all those colors. And it just makes their, their, uh, senses get excited because they're seeing so many different colors. Whereas if you just took one green and said, oh, I'm going to use sap green. And that's all the green you're going to use is sap green the whole time. That won't look exciting. It's going to look boring. And then you're going to run into that problem where 
your your paintings will look kind of dull and not not too exciting. So if you want to have an exciting painting, the first thing you can do right away is add lots of colors. And it's so e it's so easy. You don't have to even think about it. Look how many greens we have here. So we have sap green, olive green, viridian green. So we have three greens we can right away put right on the palette and use that are going to work out with this composition because it's a flower composition. So right away you know you can use all these greens and it's not a problem. You're not going to run into any issue where you're doing some, you know, kind of weird looking color combination. You're going to have all your natural green colors you would find in flowers and leaf forms right there and that's fine. Then I added in a little bit of raw umber which kind of looks good and it's sort of a warmer color, right? Like kind of a gold color. That's kind of a warm color. So you can put that in there too. It looks really good with flowers and things like that. So you'll just notice that you can use a, a lot of greens and your golds too. So you have you can you have an option of using some raw sienna and and uh, um, yellow ochre. You can even use some. Uh, cadmium yellow lemon too in some of your leaf forms over here on this side too let's say you want to add a little bit of that yet fresh yellow look maybe there where the um we use some olive green and some cad lemon yellow and maybe we'll use that for where those baby breath is so I'll splash like that where the where the baby breath is like that And then maybe I'll paint in a little bit of that rose there too, with that little bit of yellow. I want to keep those roses white though, for the most part. We will do some shadowing on the roses eventually, but let's get the let's paint around all of the white flowers, the white roses in this painting, versus trying to paint a white rose. Actually, if you have white paper and you try to paint a white rose, you can imagine that's not going to work. So that's why we're painting around our subject matter. We're doing negative shape painting. We paint around the subject matter and the subject matter appears. Let's do it now. Okay, let's do this one over here. So we're going to paint around this rose over here and it will appear. And there we have it. We're painting around this rose and now it's appearing. And we'll get some more greens going here. Sap green, a little bit of um, raw umber. Okay, so we just painted around this rose here. that. Then we can add a little bit of light green with lemon cad, cad lemon yellow, a little bit of cerulean blue. And then we can do a little bit of shadowing here at the bottom and underneath like that. And then some over here. And then we have our first rose we painted. There. Like that. Okay, now let's try to do the same idea. We're going to do negative shape painting. Again, negative shape painting, you've probably heard that many times as a watercolor artist. And again, the simple idea is you paint around something to make it appear. So if I want to, this rose to appear, I paint the greens around it and then the shape of the rose becomes evident because we painted around it with the darker colors and there you can see the shape of the of the rose. And then we'll do the same thing too here. We'll take some of that uh, cadmium uh, yellow lemon with a little bit of sap green and we'll get some of that. We'll do some of this uh, 
lively green color. And we'll do some darker green too there. And like that. And then we're also going to do we're going to do background color for the outside grass. There's going to be grass outside this window. So I'll paint that grass color that we're going to be looking at through the window. So I put that right here. And again, I'm starting to paint around this rose to create the shape of the rose. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, pick up some of these greens, maybe a little more, some of this green here. And there's our wind, our grass outside our window. A little more cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. It's as well. And there we go. And now you can see I'm actually now I'm painting the outside of the. the window. There's grass outside this window. Like that. Okay, so you can kind of see we've done quite a bit of work right here in this section. If I had to say, we've done about half of the, the vase with the roses right now, except for the vase. We did about half of the bouquet. So that's a great time when you want to maybe take a break. I might go in and do just a little more work here. Maybe I'll do a couple stems. And also another key I wanted to mention is try not to fill in. That's why I said before, if you can uh, imagine... If you see something like this in a photograph, you can always enhance it or change it a little bit. So as a watercolor artist, you're the artist. You always want to think, how can I maybe make something better or look a little more interesting or better in my painting from what I'm working with with my subject matter? And that's a great way to think is try to enhance things when you can to make it look better for your painting. So you'll hear a lot of professional watercolor artists say that, that you... When you look at a scene, whether you're outdoors or you're painting from photographs or books or uh, your, your um, social media type things, your, uh, your electronic devices, phones, iPads, home computers, TVs, your TV screens, whatever you're painting from, always remember, as an artist, you have the um, creative liberty and the you know, liberty to change things to make it look better. So I know myself from experience that if I leave more white paper in the bouquet, throughout the bouquet, some white paper, it looks better than trying to block it in all darks like this, all this dark solid. You see how that's all really dark and dense? I can make this bouquet of roses look better by leaving more white paper in the, um, in the bouquet, in my painting. So that's something you can think about. And um, you'll learn that as you go, that it's really beneficial if you can um, change things, make things better for your painting by just getting creative and taking the liberty and saying, you know what, I'm going to change this. I'm going to make it look better for my painting. And then you do that. You make the change, you stick with it, and then you'll notice, wow, it, it does look better. And if it doesn't look better, then you say, well, then I'll, I'll try it differently the next time. But you will take your liberty as an artist and, you know, paint to uh, make your painting look w good. You paint that way. You try to make your painting look good first and foremost. You wouldn't be kind of slavishly trying to copy something all the time, the way you're seeing it in your photograph or, you're, or, or if you're working from a book or, again, like from nature, if you're painting outdoors, doing still life, whatever it is, you don't want to sort of box yourself in and think that you have to do it exactly like you see it, you can change it and enhance it. You can enhance your composition, your paintings, to make it look better. So if you try different 
methods and techniques with your paintings, you might say, oh, it, it looks better if I leave more white paper and lights in this bouquet so you kind of feel like you can see through the bouquet like it's a lattice and you can see like it, it feels more like airy and has more of a, a light feeling. Whereas if you put all these dense darks in here everywhere and pack all darks in there, it might not look good. However, it also depends on your style. You might want to have that look and that might look good too. So it's all up to you. You're the artist. You paint your painting the way you want to paint it. I'm just throwing out my suggestions on what I like to see and what I think looks good in a painting, but you might have different ideas and that's fine. Don't be locked into thinking that I have all the answers. I'm just showing you what I like to do. You can find um, out what you like uh, as you go to as an artist and there's other artists out there too. You'll pick up uh, ideas from and so on and so forth. But okay, let's come back. We'll continue working on this, but I wanted to just let this um, dry a little bit and also too I want to take a break I've been painting about 20 minutes so I need a break and then I'll come right back and we'll keep going all right so we're moving right along here um, what I was thinking of next is I wanted to add a few um, items to my painting besides just the vase and the flowers and the window in the background here and I think we have um, some uh, plenty of space to add a few things so I wanted to add actually one thing I wanted to add over here was I thought it'd be interesting to have maybe a uh, like a olive oil jar over here so I might draw an olive oil, olive oil jar um, sitting on this uh, windowsill like this so I'll draw the olive oil jar like this like that That. I thought that would look good, an olive oil jar. And then maybe over here too, I thought something might be interesting, maybe like um maybe like a uh, like a spice uh, spice can for like maybe something. And um, what else can we do here? So we got an olive oil jar. We'll make that glass. Maybe we'll make it uh, so we'll have that with some olive oil in there and we'll have our spice can here. And then maybe uh, maybe we'll do a coffee cup here. That. So let's do a coffee cup there. We may have some fun with this. Some coffee cup, olive oil. Maybe we'll have um, maybe we'll have a lemon over here too. Maybe we'll have a lemon over here. We'll have a lemon over here, and then maybe an apple or an orange. Let's do an orange, or maybe a green apple. Yeah, maybe we'll do a green apple, a lemon, coffee cup olive oil jar and a small uh, spice can. One of those old McCormick spice cans from yesteryear. And um, I think that's good. We have the window frame over here. We have the outdoors out here. Um, I think everything's looking really good now. So you can always do that again. Go in and add some uh, subject matter to your paintings if you like. I'm just doing some fun things on the uh, uh, improvising here just so I can create a better painting for you so it looks a little better a little more interesting so we'll continue on here um, I'm gonna change my water so I like to change my water often frequently so I'll just change my water I have my water bucket over here on the right and um, let's see what else I think everything else is pretty good we'll bring our flowers back into view here okay I think everyone's seen the flowers I'm gonna move my phone away from the painting right now because I'm kinda of working 
and it's going to be difficult to paint with the phone here. But you've seen the picture. You can also pause now too. I can actually do this. I can take my phone like that and I can do this and you can even screen capture that if you want. I can move this down a little bit. So you can kind of see that you can maybe screen capture or you can kind of get a good feel for like how we did this. There's three roses on the top here and then two below. So I'm going to sit this phone up here across from me so I can see it clearly still across from me. But I need, I need the room over here to work like this with my hand so I can't really leave the phone there. So that's why sometimes I don't have the phone all the time set up like for this painting. But I hope you'll forgive me for that. that. I just really I need the room here to paint. So we'll continue on here. So um, again, I, I'm going to do some more of these. stems. So there's some stems inside here. And there's some shadowing in there a little bit too. And then uh, what else do we have here? We have some shadowing in the roses. So we have a little bit of shadowing under there. And then under here too. So you want to do some shadowing under the roses with your cerulean blue and cadmium lemon yellow. You kind of get a nice mix there. Um, you could also add a little bit of um, raw umber to keep it warm and cool. So you have blue and so we'll have a little bit of warm and cool colors, not everything one color. And then I'll make a little more blue and green, sap green and French ultramarine blue just for a couple couple darks here and there. It's kind of nice to have a couple darks for your um, and it is in the photograph you did notice there were some really good really strong darks for the um, for the background colors like behind the roses the uh, leaf forms. So And then we have some leaf forms like that. And you can do that too. Add a couple of those. If you have to, you can blot up a little bit. Sometimes if you make it something too dark, you can take a little bit of tissue or paper towel and just blot it up a little bit. So. So I'm doing a little bit of shadowing on this rose here, which is um, cadmium lemon yellow and cerulean blue. I think that kind of does a good job of like sort of going around, painting around the rose there. We're doing, uh, again, negative shade painting, paint around the object. And the object appears, and uh, same here. Do that. Okay, and there's some more. So I'm using the greens, the darker greens, to shape around my rose here. And I think that looks good. So you're kind of starting to see that I... I'm trying to... Uh,
then I can take some straight paint like that and even Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. And again, raw umber, maybe some French ultramarine blue to get a little bit of a darker dark in there, sap green. Like that. Do a couple splashes like that. Now, as we're working, you know, let's uh, we're going to do some more of the greens. Some umbers, some umber here. So just try to fill in this this area outside the uh, outside the window. That would be a grass field, maybe. Maybe there's some cooler colors up here, further in the distance, up at the top. I'm just trying to have fun with doing the washes here. It's not too, I don't have to be too worried about, this is just the background grass, colors outside. Then I have the bottle here, so let me do some creative colors. I don't want to make the bottle seem and then the uh, olive oil olive oil maybe it's this color Maybe it's more, it's some more yellow. Like that. So I'm doing again the grass outside the window. Okay, then we'll do some blue, raw umber, some blue, maybe a touch of purple.
All right, so we are looking good here. Getting some more raw umber. Let's do some raw umber down here. I might leave the this white paper here. the coffee cup like so and then leave it kind of light on the outer edges here and then we have a lemon let's do a lemon here like so let's do this Then let's get some darker darks in the center here. So we have a little bit of rim lighting around the outside edges of the... And then some more purple and blue, maybe. Raw umber. So I'm trying to mix like a grayish color. And this would be like this. Kind of a shadow like that. A little bit of that. Maybe some French ultramarine blue mixed in there. Like that. And then some... Do some shadowing there and some shadowing here. Then we have some shadowing here for the... For the window. This might be a green apple here. And then we have uh, a shadow along here. And then this is the uh, wood. Maybe we'll make this a little more uh, brown for the sill, the window sill. And we leave a little bit of white light on the top of the window sill. Like that. And uh, what else can we do here? Um, maybe the green McCormick here.
And since I'm doing a little bit of uh, red in there, I'm doing a touch of alizarin crimson over here for this McCormick. I add a little bit over here, maybe a couple of things, just some, a little bit of alizarin crimson around the other parts of the painting. All I did was take a little bit of alizarin crimson and sort of add it here and there and everywhere in my painting because I wanted to add a little bit of red here for this McCormick um, spice tin. So if I did it here then I would obviously I have to, it's just good, good to harmonize your colors so that's why I did it. I'm harmonizing my colors by adding that touch of lizard and crimson everywhere everywhere around the painting now so that it doesn't look like I just added one little touch of color and it doesn't sort of you know harmonize with the rest of the painting so it does look good if I add that little touch of lizard and crimson everywhere else. The only thing is it's really I probably should have waited till everything dried before I added that little bit of lizard and crimson but and then we'll do a little more we're going to do rim lighting on this these uh, panes window panes here so I'm going to add a little bit of a dark brown raw umber and a little bit of a uh, cerulean blue along the center of the wood. Lights for the uh, grills. So I'm, I'm painting the grills with a touch of paint in the center of the grill, but leaving white. leaving white uh, on the edges so that it feels like the light's coming through the window and kind of making like a, a bit of a um, rim lighting around the... like that. Alright, I, I think this looks really good. I'm gonna leave it at leave it here at this point. I think you really kind of get the feel for this. We just had a lot of fun. We got everything really, you know, set up in the beginning with the bouquet of flowers first in the vase. We worked on our drawing to get our window, um, uh, our window uh, set up with our window panes, our grills in the windows, our window sill, and then our table here. Kitchen table or it could be a countertop. And then we just added in a few extra items to make it look a little more you know, interesting. Like if you just had the bouquet of flowers here, the bouquet of roses in the vase, that would look great too. But to kind of like kick it up a notch, I would suggest adding some um, extra things in there. Maybe some fruit, a cup, saucer, a bowl. Um, I did a, I did a, um, I painted in a, drew and painted in a uh, olive oil uh, 
jar, a contain uh, jar actually, pour top jar, uh, a little McCormick tin, which is for spices, you know, the old time McCormick tins. And then uh, we have a green apple, a lemon, and a coffee cup. So if you add these few little things in there to your painting, to this composition, you'll notice it'll really look more, you know, interesting to have some other things going on in it, you know, besides just uh, the flowers and everything. So, you know, just my idea of how it would look with a little extra things added in there. We'll peel off the tape and see how that looks too. And you can see once you peel off your tape, that looks so good. It looks like you framed it out already. And then you can even pin it up on your uh, studio wall. You put it on your refrigerator, tack it up on, uh, you know, tape it up on a, a wall near your, your desk at your house, or maybe you bring it in and you tack it up on the wall at your office where you work. And you'll just notice that it really just livens up the place because this is just gorgeous. White roses, nice green colors, like that lively green and yellow color scheme. So that's what we basically have here. We have like a golden, like yellow and green predominant color scheme here in this painting. And then we add in a little bit of alizarin and crimson for some red. We added a little bit of warm in there to raw umber. But basically it's like a green yellow and then a little bit of that alizarin crimson just mixed in there in the uh, washes to make it kind of just look beautiful, sparkle with uh, light and uh, color. I'm glad you're here painting with me. And uh, we're going to see you on the next video. And I always say, please subscribe on the right-hand side below. If you haven't subscribed, all that's going to do is just make sure that you uh, are following along with us. You'll get my videos every week in your YouTube channel. So whenever you open up YouTube, you'll see my new videos right there. You know, you can watch if you want. Maybe if you don't have time to draw and paint every uh, week, at least you watch my videos. You'll learn a lot just by watching and listening too. Sometimes you can just uh, listen to um, listen to our videos without even maybe watching. If, if you maybe you just want to listen to it while you're doing something else and you just want to hear the information, but hearing the information is important. You'll hear all the constant terms over and over and over again, and you'll learn the terms. And that's a critical part of watercolors. You, you have to almost really familiarize yourself with all the terms that you, you, you know, you need to in watercolor so that when I say tonal values, you know what that means. When I say, um, you want to harmonize your colors, you're going to know what I'm talking about right away. Or if I say you need to, um, you know, uh, lighten up in a section with your, your tone or your values, you'll know what that means. Um, splashing techniques, all these different things you'll kind of learn painting, uh, you know, uh, we, we talked about in this painting, especially really critical is, um, negative shape painting, which is painting around our subject matter for the subject matter to appear. And it looks much better. And you can see a, a grouping of flowers here much better as I painted around them. And, uh, so that's negative shape painting. So all these terms and things and phrases and techniques and methods that we have here, I cover them on my channel every week, week after week, month after month and year after year. So I'm glad you're here. Stick with us here. You'll learn something each time you watch a video and uh, practice along with us. And then also, too, you're practicing in your own time, too, as well, practicing your drawing and your painting. So we'll see you on the next video. And thanks so much again for painting along with us. Enjoy the journey of watercolor. It's a fun journey. All you have to do is work at it a little bit every week. If you can get in a little bit of time every day, that's great. But at least maybe on the weekends, you join along with us here and just do a little bit. And that's going to add up to a lot. So we'll see you on the next video, okay? All right.